Well, hello, happy Thursday, kittens. Today is Thursday, July 12th. Yes, it's the 12th because tomorrow's Friday the 13th, 2018. And welcome to the first recording of the Knit Cute podcast. Hi, how have you all been? Um, most of you watching today are probably from my old podcast, Not a Podcast. And you're probably wondering who this weirdo knit cute is who popped up in your feed because I have changed my name since I last talked to you guys. Um, I am your host, Amanda. Uh, you can find me as Wit on Ravelry and as So Nitpicky on Instagram and now Knit Cute on YouTube. Um, I've been doing some changes lately, guys. Um, so let's see, I'm hoping not to say um too much, but it's been about seven months since I've done a proper recording and I am really out of practice. I had grand plans that all fell through. I will talk about life stuff and what I've been up to since you all last heard from me in the end of December of last year. I'll say that for the end of the podcast so that in case you are a new viewer, or you don't particularly care what I've been up to, you don't have to sit through all of that to get to the content of the show. So we're gonna treat this like a brand new podcast and I'm going to do an actual introduction episode, which I never did under my old podcast. Um, it started off as videos, Work in Progress Wednesday videos for my blog, because it would have been easier to do those than to um, write out blog posts. And then it kind of morphed into a podcast without me knowing it. And I had probably done eight to 10 recordings before I realized that it was no longer a work in progress video segment for my blog. It had become an actual podcast. Very long roundabout thing here. I still need to do introductions. I'm so out of practice. So the new podcast is Knit Cute. And this is going to be a primarily knitting podcast and that's not anything different from uh, what you guys previously have known and there's also other fiber crafts and other crafty goodness that will be in here plus if there's something I feel like talking about I might just use this as a platform for it because why not you might have some of the same interests that I do and you might find some of that stuff actually engaging and there are going to be times when I don't have a lot of content so I'm planning to record only when I have enough material to fill up what I consider a normal episode length for me, which is um, usually a minimum of 30 minutes and usually no more than 45 to 50 minutes. Uh, every once in a while you will get a much longer episode from me or a much shorter one, but in general I'm pretty consistent in the about the 40 minute range. As I try not to take up too much of your time because there are so many other podcasts out there and if you're someone who likes to watch all of them, I don't know how you get them all done in a day. It's It just blows my mind because there are so many of them that are between one and two hours every week or a couple times a month. Just. Oh, I don't even know how people have that much content to talk about. So anyway, I think I've already covered most of my welcome notes. I've got a new show notes book and I actually took a bunch of notes today so I could try to keep myself on track. Oh, where are we going here? So I'm aiming to hopefully record twice a month. However, I have a feeling it's going to be more like every three weeks approximately because I don't usually craft fast enough and I don't want to show you the same projects over and over again, but with only like an inch or two inches of progress on them. I realize that a lot of people like to see that kind of progress, but I myself kind of find it boring and I don't want to talk about the same projects 10, 12 times before they're finally finished. I think it'll just make things easier for all of us. And I, if I do record more often, I could be more selective about what I talk about and not mention every single work in progress every single time I record. So there's always that too. Again, I want to base it off of content rather than a set schedule, even though I know some people really do appreciate a set schedule. I just want to be in a place where I make it as easy as possible for myself to record because I missed doing these and I find it very, um, not cathartic or therapeutic, but there's something very soothing about talking to other people. I do not talk to a lot of adults in my life. I am pretty reclusive. I guess I can talk about that when I introduce myself here, which actually that's what I'm segueing into. So who am I? I am Amanda. I am about to turn 36 years old in a week from tomorrow actually is my birthday. So that will be before the next time I record and talk to you guys. So between then and now I'm going to magically age a year. 
Uh, who am I though? I am a stay-at-home military spouse, an army spouse specifically. Uh, we have been in the service for, uh, my husband is just about to hit 16 years. He joined up in July of 2002. And actually he had his going away party on my golden birthday. So I still feel a little bit bitter about that because I never got to have one. Uh, and and you, for those of you who don't know what a golden birthday is, the birthday where the age matches the day of the month you were born on. So, you know, everybody has theirs before they're 31. Um, mine would have been when I was 20, and that's how I celebrated 20 was I got braces, <laughs> and my then boyfriend left me to go join the military. Um, and then we got married the following March. So I still consider it that we have been in for 16 years because I've been with him this entire time. Uh, let's see. I have two children who are my daughter is going to turn 10 in a couple of months and my son just turned 12. Things have been interesting with them. Um, my son is right at that age where he is exactly my height. I am about the height of an average 12 year old boy or an 11 year old boy. I'm only five foot two. And uh, he's been growing like crazy and his voice is starting to crack and lower. His voice has lowered in the last week and a half, which is just that's a trip um, to have your child wake up one morning and their voice is suddenly like not a full octave lower, but several steps lower. And you realize that that voice isn't going back up into the same register. Up until about a month ago, both of my children had very similar sounding voices. Um, and it could be easy to mistake them if you didn't know who you were talking to sometimes. You can definitely tell who my son is now because his voice has lowered just enough that it's starting to go into that more transitioning into an adolescent teenage boy mode it's just it's it's a very strange time in my house thing everything's changing right now uh, i also have two dogs who if you have watched the podcast you've seen them before i have two shiba inu who are you know the dog the doge um you may know the meme the so wow uh kind of the dog who's side eyeing um they are very popular in um memes and pop culture right now and have been for some time. Uh, I have two girls. Uh, there's Tala who just turned six and actually she's outside baking in the sun right now because she loves summer. And then there's Leela who just is turning four in a, no just turned four and she doesn't like to be hot and sweaty so she's hiding out in the, the living room where it's dark and it's cool right now. Uh, you will see a lot of pictures of them if you follow me on Instagram and you will often see them pop up from time to time in the podcast. Luckily, Tala's not in here right now, so nobody's making lots of noises and trying to be disruptive while I record. For some reason, it bothers her when I talk to the camera or I talk to my computer. Um, she's perfectly quiet every other time, wants nothing to do with me, just sleeps. But I start talking to the computer or the camera and she knows and she starts making a fuss and being kind of wild. So, okay, so we're ARMY. Uh, right now, we are stationed at Fort Drum, which is in very, very far northern upstate New York. I live literally 15 to 20 miles off of the Canadian border up here. Like, we're way up here. Um, we are not in upstate from the city, which is basically anything that's not the city. The city's like six and a half hours from here, by the way. We are nowhere near New York City. And uh, yeah, we're proper upstate. Like, it you barely get more upstate than we are unless you head a little more northeast. There's a little bit more coastline there along the border and uh, the river and the lake that are up there. So anyway, that's where we live now. And we have been here, we just passed six years since we moved here. Uh, we will be here one more year. So in about a year, there will be a podcast interruption where I go to move and hopefully it doesn't take too long to get reset up wherever we're going next. I'm hoping by about Christmas time, we should know when we're leaving exactly and hopefully we'll know where we're going um the army is very unpredictable with those kinds of things now we're in aviation so there aren't that many base choices as there can be for other jobs but it's going to depend on who needs pilots at that time and what um job track my husband is moved as uh if you had watched previous episodes. If you watched around May of last year, you would know that my husband was training to be an inspector, or not inspector, <laughs> inspector pilot. I'm thinking of, oh, what's his name? Jason. Ah, suddenly forgot that actor's name. His 
child's name is Inspector Pilot. It's Instructor Pilot. <laughs> Uh, they are the people who train other pilots how to fly and they fly with all the new people and progress them until they are um, experienced enough in order to be able to fly with other people who are not IPs. We'll just say IP because that's easier. Uh, and during that time he had a skydiving accident where he fully dislocated his right ankle and broke the back leg in his low backbone in his lower leg in two separate spots in these really long diagonal breaks. I mean, he really messed his leg up. Um, he's doing much better now. He's had two surgeries on that leg and it's finally mostly not swollen, but I think that ankle is always going to be thicker. And uh, there's one piece of hardware that's never going to leave that ankle because it was so deeply embedded in a bone that they were like, it's not worth trying to remove it. It might do more damage taking it out. So we're just going to leave it there because it can't break. It's so deeply embedded in a bone. So he um, missed out on that opportunity to become an IP. And he then was tracked as a safety guy. So he is actually a safety officer now. But he has been warned that the odds are overwhelmingly good that when we go to leave here in a year, he will have to re-go to the course to become an IP as well since his airframe is now short on IPs. <laughs> and actually I just realized that IP sounds kind of funny too if you're not military. There's a lot of things about army and military acronyms that can sound kind of juvenile and funny. So if you've been giggling this whole time, I totally understand. You are allowed. So anyway, depending on which job he is coded as and who needs what where, depends on where we'll go. We could go anywhere from super far northern Alaska, which not my first choice. We could go out to Colorado. We could be stuck somewhere in Alabama or Georgia. Uh, we could go anywhere pretty much. Hopefully we just do not get re-PCS'd here, which I think the odds are very low, but it could happen. So. Yes, I am in military housing actually. So if you're wondering where I record from, we do not rent on the economy. We have been in military housing this whole time and uh, it's not the worst. So let's see, we've talked about, I think most of me. I am originally from the Madison, Wisconsin area, got married very young, have lived in Texas and Alabama and now here. I would love to have an Oconus outside of the Continental US duty station. But the odds, for, I guess actually the odds for that are pretty good of happening because we've never had one. So we'll see where we end up. We could possibly end up at Hawaii or Alaska or possibly, I think Germany is still an option too. Sorry, the little dog has come in and she's uh, checking out my setup here because in order to try to get you guys high enough, uh, I have a tripod, but it turns out it doesn't um, telescope up that tall. So I set you all up on a stack of magazines and boxed jello and she's sniffing the jello boxes as we speak trying to figure out what on earth is going on out here <sighs> so who am i as a crafter though so i have been crafting most of my life i started off being somebody who drew all the time um, i wanted to go into illustration and i chickened out after i got out of high school and i never applied to any art schools partially because I didn't qualify for financial aid in the amount that I would have needed to be able to go, and partially because since I wasn't the best, I was like, well, I don't seem to have a talent for that, which is, this is something that we do when we socialize girls growing up, is we tend to stress, you're so talented, versus, oh, look at all the hard work you put in and look how much you've improved. Um, girls tend to give up on things quicker if they feel that they do not have a natural talent versus boys who are kind of taught to persevere and keep pushing through and improve on things. Anyway, a little side note there. Um, so because I wasn't the greatest at it and I had a very condescending and very unsupportive art teacher in high school, I was discouraged from going that path. I originally wanted to be an illustrator, but specifically a sequential artist or a comic illustrator is what I wanted to do. So I didn't end up doing this. I ended up instead wasting two and a half years taking random classes at a local tech school, never finished my degree, got married, and then moved and have been a stay at home ever since. I haven't worked since 2003 outside of my house, which is kind of weird. Anyway, this was supposed to be talking about how I'm a craft person. I am also somebody who gets um, distracted very easily. In my mind, everything's connected. There's no linear progression of topics. Everything is just webs of just stuff that's interconnected. And so it takes 
the my path can be very uh, strange and hard to follow so I apologize for that I'll try to be better in other episodes where things are charted out a little bit better but you know it's hard to chart out and write out an entire origin story for yourself okay so started off being somebody who drew all the time and I started trying to take up fiber crafts when I was six or seven years old um, my mother's mother my maternal grandmother was a sewist and mostly altered her own clothing and didn't do any other crafts that I know of and my paternal grandmother was a crocheter and knitter which sounds amazing except she had no patience to teach me even though I kept trying to learn and I spent about um, oh, it was almost 18 years from the time that I started trying to learn how to crochet and knit until I finally figured it out and got it down. I started knitting in May of 2007 when my son was a year old and we were back home in the Madison area. And at that time, my mother worked right next to a quilt shop, which also had a little bit of a yarn shop in it. And they were offering beginning knitting lessons. I had tried to learn from books I had tried to learn from my grandmother I had tried to learn I can't remember if I did some I think I tried on the internet I tried learning from the the um something like Debbie Stoller uh, Stitch and Bitch books and it just never quite took any time until I finally took a class in person and I had I have not stopped knitting since I've had periods of lower knitting desire but I have never stopped knitting so I've been knitting now for just over 11 years um, I still can't really crochet, but I can kind of um, muck my way through it if I need to. Um, it's definitely not a craft I prefer, but I also spin. And right now is Tour de Fleece because of the Tour de France. And I have been spinning like crazy, you guys. I'm loving it. Um, so on top of that, I also want to learn how to weave. I have a loom that I still haven't used. Um, I would like to weave. I do some sewing. I'm not a prolific sewist like my mother and her mother were, but I can muck my way through basic patchwork and I'm able to sew fairly simple, straightforward garments. And I, I'm trying to think what else I do. I cross stitch. Sometimes I embroider. I don't do that very often though, but every once in a while I do. And I'm trying to think, I'm also trying to get back into art after almost two decades of not doing it. I am trying to get back into at least watercolor painting and maybe playing around with mixed media paintings and illustrations, basically. I'm kind of coming back full circle to where I started off in my life, which was, that was my first love. Especially since at the time that I came of age and got out into the world, the internet wasn't quite what it is now. Um, there weren't big, um, opportunities like there are now to have your own shops and you know especially for people who do illustrations that maybe by traditional standards are not considered amazing wonderful art are able to have shops so I used to do a lot of super cute very simplistic art and uh, I was very actively discouraged from pursuing anything because I was told it wasn't real art but I'm and again I'm still bitter about that I've been realizing as I get older here how bitter I am about some of the things in my life and things that I thought didn't affect me that deeply actually had a much deeper impact than I realized so anyway I kind of want to get back into trying to do illustration and paintings even if I'm not that great because I miss it I miss creating those kinds of things I just I like to make stuff if you haven't figured that out about me yet I like to create video I like to create content I used to be a writer I had a, actually I think I had a really good uh, chance at being a writer when I was younger but again haven't done it in a couple of decades so that is not currently an option but maybe I'll get back into it now that my children are older and I have a little bit more brain space so let me look at this here because I have gone so far off the path here you guys oh so I started podcasting with my first podcast I'm also a podcaster obviously um, in September of 2012 is when I started not a podcast and that went through December of 2017 there are approximately 200 videos you can find them on this channel if you really really want to watch them I wouldn't suggest watching the first 15 to 20 videos though they are not amazing in terms of quality and the sound on them was pretty bad um, I have definitely improved over time even if I'm still pretty basic in my techniques uh, yeah and I think that's really all there is to say about me except for I guess I'm also a yarn dyer um, I have Lammy Toes which is a speckle dyeing yarn shop which I opened up in June of 2004 
14, I think. Um, I'm a pretty small dyer, a pretty small shop. A lot of people don't know about me. I am terrible at self-promoting. I'm hoping to get better at that this year. Uh, Lammy's been going through some changes too. She's getting ready to move shop, but I have that as well if you look it up. And I think that's going to be it for introductions. That's like 20 minutes worth of content already. And yeah, <laughs> I'm sort of just babbling and it feels a little weird. So let's go into what our normal... Actually, you know what? Let's put in the giveaway at this point. I had told you in the quick video I did to introduce... I didn't even talk about Socket to Summer. Oh my god, guys, what is wrong with me? I should have done that in the beginning, in the administration part. So, okay, let's do... Talk about Socket to Summer, and then we'll talk about the giveaway. So at the beginning of June, I announced that I'm still running Socket to Summer this year, even though I didn't have the podcast actively running. There are quite a few of you participating in the group on Ravelry, and uh, we already have, I think, at least 25 finished objects, which is amazing considering I'm sure a lot of people did not see my video and may not, if you don't follow me on Instagram, wouldn't have seen my posts mentioning it. But I'm going to tell you now, I am running Socket to Summer for the sixth, sixth, summer that's quite a sound to try to make and it is running it started on june 1st and it runs through the 31st of august um, all of the rules are in the ravelry group in the thread um, i keep things pretty loose and easy to participate though i do have some rules including if you want to play along for prizes um, i do ask that you join the ravelry group um, but if you um want to you can come in and chat and just talk about socks i know there are a lot of other sock knit alongs going on this summer i've noticed a lot of other podcasters have kind of jumped on that bandwagon which is totally fine summer is great for socks and you all should double or triple or quadruple dip as much as you can so if you want to join along take a look at the rules in there and join us because there are about seven weeks of socket to summer left and that is plenty of time to maybe finish up some old works in progress and get them entered. I don't have any prizes to show you this week but I'm hoping to maybe have some on the next recording because I've been giving some thought to that and I'd like to try to get them done before the contest ends this year because I tend to be a little bit behind on those things but I always make good with having I think some pretty decent prizes. So there was that and then the next thing is is that when I did my little video on this channel last month, I mentioned to watch this episode because there would be a giveaway. So this first episode, as you guys will have already seen, has been titled 001 Regeneration. Um, when I got the idea to change over my podcast, I thought about it less as redoing everything and more as regenerating, kind of like the doctor in Doctor Who. Um, every time the doctor dies they regenerate as a new person and I can say they now since we now have a, a female doctor finally final incarnation gets to be a woman <laughs> and um anyway the doctor is still the same person but the doctor has a different style obviously a different body a different face does things maybe slightly differently than their previous incarnation did but at the core they are still the same person and so I decided that that's kind of what happened with this podcast there's gonna be a new name there's gonna be slightly different graphics things are gonna be a little different but at its core it's still the same podcast it just has hopefully a less trip up everybody who tries to talk about it name and something that makes more sense and I started properly this time so I wanted to do a giveaway to commemorate the regeneration of the podcast now this first one is crinkly I apologize for that but I am doing a Doctor Who themed giveaway so the first is this lovely sock blank that was sent to me by Andre Sue or Andy who is Andre Sue Knits that I showed you guys ages ago on the podcast she sent me two of them which was so sweet of her Andy if you're watching I'm sorry it took me forever to get these as a giveaway but I think this is the perfect opportunity and she sent me two TARDIS sock blanks I'm not going to take this out of the plastic because it's pristine and perfect for you guys and it just has the TARDIS blue police box all over it with a light blue background and to go with that I sewed up from some scraps from a custom bag I had sewn for a friend a Doctor Who themed project bag uh, this project bag is big enough that you can fit two yarn cakes in the bottom at least at least lace weight fingering weight sport weight it might be a little small to fit in two worsted weight cakes but it's also not very tall as you can see um, 
because I didn't think this out when I did the bottom so much, but it's plenty big for a small shawl, a toy, a little baby sweater, socks. There's lots of things that can fit in here, but it has all sorts of fun things. Um, from the oldest series, there's the K9 unit, um, one of the versions of the Dr. Sonic screwdriver, the TARDIS. Um, there's these little embellishments that look kind of like the Gallifreyan alphabet. I'm trying to think if there's anything else on here. Oh, the psychic papers are on here, a bow tie, uh, all sorts of fun little things to commemorate Doctor Who. Um, instead of my usual Lamy Toast tag, I did just a little matching blue chevron uh, piece of tape. There's a beautiful blue zipper. And then the inside is this really nice natural kind of putty linen color. Um, it's a very nice neutral bag. Um, I like to tab my zippers so the zippers are tabbed and nice and neat. And uh, the bottom is denim with rainbow nippy flex in it. So it's mostly neutral with just a little bit of fun to it. Um, yeah, so this is what you can win. You can win the bag and the sock blank. I don't know if I'm going to make you do anything for it. I think I'm just going to have you enter a thread. Um, I'll, I'll let you enter two different ways. You can either, actually three, I guess, because there's a blog. I have a blog. I have YouTube and I have the podcast group. You can enter in either the group, in the comments on YouTube, or the comments on my blog, which uh, the blog will be changing over soon too in URL, but I will post this on the old blog, which is at sonitpicky.net, as well as I will then have the new blog start. And I always embed the video, you can, and you may have watched it there, um, but just enter and please, if you're on Ravelry, maybe enter with just your Ravelry name so that I know where I can contact you and let you know that you've won. Um, usually I, um, I make people contact me, but I think on this one I'm going to contact you since I don't know when the next time I will, how long it's going to be until I record, I don't, I don't know. I'm going to let this run. I plan to record before the end of J July. I was gonna say January. Oh my gosh, you guys, I am just all over the place today. Uh, until the, I'm gonna record again before the end of July because of the end of the Tour de Fleece. Um, let's keep this open. Today is the 12th. Let's keep it open until, let's say the 23rd because I like the number 23. Uh, so we will keep it open from now until July 23rd and yeah, you can enter any of those three ways, but please enter only once. Don't enter on all three. Um, I will end up having to find a way to assign numbers for the random number generator, and I will pull the winner, and I will contact you and let you know. If you don't have a Ravelry ID, um, I will contact you some way via YouTube or my blog, or and obviously if you're on Ravelry, you'll have answered on Ravelry, so that's not a problem. Anyway, I will find a way to contact you, or you can find a way to contact me if that's the case. I don't think that really made much sense. Anyway, let's just go into actual real content now, because we are now 30 minutes in and I'm rambling my way through this. So, knitting content. I have so many finished objects from the last time I talked to you guys that I'm not going to show them all off, but I think I'm going to insert a quick slideshow here so that if you do not look at my blog or you have not followed me on Instagram, you can quickly see all the things I have finished since December of 2017. There are sweaters, there are socks, there are toys. Um, there is a lot of stuff in there and I have been very, very busy knitting. So you saw that 
parade of FOs. I've been doing a lot of knitting this calendar year so far, more than I have possibly ever. Sorry, I just washed my hair today and I got a haircut and there's just hairs everywhere all over me. So I have one other finished object that's not in the FO parade that I thought I would show you. Now the ends are not woven in on this because I don't tend to weave them in until I go to wear the object, but I finished a boxy sweater by Hohi Locatelli. Uh, this is a pattern that I think is six or seven dollars on Ravelry and I knit this in a now defunct dyers yarn. Uh, it was Soft Like Kittens who was Annette from, is she from New Zealand? I think she's from New Zealand and not Australia. She used to have a really lovely podcast called Gentle Ribbing and she's just fun to watch in general. I follow her, if you follow her on Instagram, she is she has some beautiful things. She's a beautiful hand spinner among other things. But she used to have a yarn company until it was irritating a condition on her hands and she decided to stop dying. So because I had custom ordered all this yarn from her when I found out she was quitting, I decided to make a blended boxy sweater. Um, I am going to be honest here and just say that I think the term fade and faded is so overused at this point for a term that we used to call blended, blending colors together. Um, this fading technique is nothing new. I mean, it's great that it's in so many things and I'm glad that it's made a lot of people find new and wonderful ways to use their yarns, but this has been a thing for a very long time, long before you had to pay for patterns to stick this concept into a bunch of really basic um, sweater shapes and things. So anyway, I decided to do this on the boxy because I did not have enough of any one color to do the sweater. So this monstrous thing, I mean, <laughs> oh, it is, it's going and going and going. Uh, this is my finished sweater. And then I actually ran out of the pink and I pulled a tiny bit of nitpick stroll glimmer. I don't know if you might be able to see some of the glimmer there for the back. Overall, I am really happy with this sweater. I can't remember. I think I used the needle size that's called for on the pattern. I'm not 100% sure. I I finished this like um, almost a month ago, so I don't remember details off the top of my head anymore. Um, I know that I did not knit the recommended size and also I didn't bother with a gauge swatch for this because you know what with something that's intended to be worn with 12 to 14 inches of positive ease it doesn't matter if you're a little off either way if it's slightly bigger meh if you're a little bit smaller meh so I didn't bother with it what I ended up doing though because I knew that I do not want 14 inches of positive ease in my sweater is I chose to knit a size two sizes down from the one recommended based on my bust measurement. So I knit not the smallest size, but I think I knit the second smallest size in this. And there's still a good, I would say six to eight inches of positive ease in here, guys. I mean, it's still huge, um, but it's more, I mean, look at how wide it is. I mean, look at that. And you can see I am obviously not that wide. <laughs> I am a fat woman, but I am not that big. Um, and what I ended up doing is I did it that way. And then I also did, based on some other projects I had seen and I enjoyed, I'm trying to, maybe I'll do it on the, uh, there's are there a few ends on the sides. Nope, both sides have a lot of ends down there. I ended up doing a split hem on it. So instead of knitting it all in the round, I chose to knit it flat because I was gonna be blending these colors together and I hate doing that kind of thing in the round. And I wanted to do a split hem. So the front is several inches shorter than the back. So I knit it flat. And then I seamed it together. And what I ended up doing to do that, in case you're wondering how that works, is I knit the front and the back at the same time on one needle. And man, there are just, I have stories about the weird ways and the really complicated ways and the really messy ways I tried to do this. Uh, but suffice it to say, I ended up going with the simplest route in the end, which was to, I had two cakes of the bottom color and I just worked from one cake for each side. Originally I was going to try to alternate skeins and alternate every other row on both sides from both cakes at the same time. It was a mess. <laughs> I gave up after I think four rounds, maybe six. That's why there's so many ends down there. And I ended up doing just one from each cake. Um, on each side and then alternated ends from the same cake for the same side. I think that makes sense because I, you know, anyway. 
so I did that and then what I did is when I got to the point where I thought oh I'm gonna add in some of the extra length in the back now I put in on a little stitch uh, progress keeper and I didn't touch the front side at all and I just knit the back knit the back knit the back until I thought I had about enough you know I watched the space grow in between and then I stopped and then I continued on with both of them the same and I think it was right where I was about ready to blend in the next color so that the stripes and everything all match up but the back has that extra like two inches of length to it. And there's actually three colors in here. The bottom color is called Button Mushroom. And that's actually not too far off. The next color is called Magnolia. And it's this really gorgeous kind of uh, mauve taupey color. And then the last color is called Paw Pads. And it's meant to be like a cat's paws. So all in all, I'm happy with this, but I could have done a bit better with my color management because I definitely winged this. Had I knit the bottom color just a little bit taller, I probably wouldn't have needed by the time I got to the top to substitute in that it was an almost 50 gram skein of Knit Picks Stroll Glimmer. I think I used... 35 or 37 grams out of the 50 gram skein. Um, had I used more of the button mushroom, I could have probably gotten away with not having to substitute any in there at all because I also had a tiny bit of magnolia left and I probably could have used just another color pass on of two rows on each side. And between those two things, I should have theoretically had enough yarn. So that is a finished object and I'm gonna be working on weaving in the five babillion ends on this thing and getting it ready for the late summer, early fall here, which up here thankfully hits so much faster than everybody else. We have maybe, maybe six weeks of hot weather left and it's gonna start cooling down pretty quick here and especially in the evenings. I mean, even right now, the evenings are still getting pretty cool. Uh, it's still getting down below 60 degrees at night, which is just, it's fabulous. It's great for sleeping. So that is finished. Uh, and that's the only one I'm gonna show you for finished objects in person. So I have some works in progress that I can show you too. So let's talk about those. So my first one is my five of eight socks. I have a goal this year to try to knit eight pairs of socks and I'm already on pair number five and I'm over halfway done with it. Here is the first one. I just do a lot of toe up, simple, plain vanilla stockinette socks. That's my happy place, usually regardless of what the yarn looks like. I don't like to do a lot of um, fancy stuff with socks. Sometimes I'll do a little bit of texture with some pearls. Maybe I'll do a, a rib or a broken rib. Sometimes I'll do a really tiny little cable. But for the most part, I knit just plain vanilla socks. And a lot of my yarn is self-striping or hand spun. So it's just the best way to show off these colorways. Um, I do a toe up Turkish cast on. Um, I think in this case I did 12. I might have done 14, I think it was 12. I increase every round for usually the first five rounds, so I get 10 higher very quickly. And then I increase every third round until I get to my full number. And on this one, because I'm knitting on slightly bigger needles than I normally do, I'm doing a 68 stitch count sock, I think. And uh, I knit, and then I do a fish lips kiss heel, and then I usually end with a good chunk of ribbing, which on here is, I say there's about 20 25 rounds there I wanted to get full through a full color repeat before I bound off so everything's all nice and neat looking but the second sock I haven't meant as fast to finish because I haven't felt like knitting my socks so much today was the first time in almost a week and a half that I actually did any work on the sock but here's sock number two I'm about halfway through the foot once I get through the foot and I get through the heel this will fly again it will take almost no time at all to finish it it's just knitting up to the seven or seven and a half inch mark to get to where I put my heel in that takes a while and uh, like I said I haven't felt like knitting socks so much recently and also I usually use it for when I have appointments or I have places I need to go. I tend to have that as my knitting but I haven't had any appointments and things lately to use it or when I've gotten there they've gotten me in right away which is just kind of wild but that happens sometimes. Uh, the other work in progress I can show you is my 10, 10 stitch blanket which you guys have seen before. Actually I should have grabbed something. I'm gonna grab something real quick. And for you guys it's like no time passed. Okay so I, this is the 10 stitch blanket this is a free pattern made available by, well, let's see her name. <laughs> her name is Frankie Brown. And the way it's originally written is for worsted weight yarn, and it's all knit as one big connected piece to make a finished blanket. And I got a dog down here now. Hello, dog. How are you? You doing okay? Yes. 
as I went to go get stuff, I accidentally threw my notebook and she is now very concerned about what's going on over here. So anyway, it was written for worsted weight and it was written to be a huge single piece blanket. Um, I had been inspired by a blanket that was knit in fingering weight yarn, I think, and was knit with alternating squares of solids and I think self-patterning or self-striping, but it was still knit as one super big finished blanket and piece, which sounds amazing, but at the same time, those rounds are huge and I can't even imagine trying to tote that around and trying to work it, work on that. So I decided to do it a different way, which you guys have seen in the past if you watched the old podcast, which most of you have, but sorry, there's more hair. I decided to break it up into a modular project. So I am using all fingering weight or sometimes lighter sport weight scraps of alternating solid and self-striping, self-patterning yarns, and I'm knitting these little squares. I'm almost in the middle. This is actually square number eight. The last time I talked to you guys, I think I had just finished square number four, maybe square number five. And I am now working on square number eight. I'm going to be knitting nine of these. So those have been coming together slowly but surely. And the plan is by the end of summer here to have that square plus square number nine finally finished. And then I'm going to put a sashing of maybe 10 stitches or possibly 12 stitches in between all of the blocks. And I'm going to do an outer border, which I'm not sure if I'm gonna finish off with an I-cord bind off or not. Oh goodness, guys, send me help if I decide to do that because that's gonna take forever. But anyway, I thought I would re-show you guys the blanket squares since it's been a while since any of you would have seen them. And I'm not set up in the best way here to be able to hold all this amazing, do you see that flash of rainbow? All this amazing wool in my lap. I'm trying to remember, okay, this is, this is the top of the pile. So these are about 18 and a half inches finished square. Like here was the first one. Here's the second one. And on my uh, Ravelry page, I have a quick note about what all the yarns are. I often don't have the colorways, but I do have the dyer on them. And if you ever want to know, send me a message, I'll tell you. Number three. Number four. Can't remember if you saw this one or not. I think you did. Five. I think this is the last one you guys saw on the podcast. Since then, I have done six. And number seven, which that fluorescent yellow is just blowing out the camera. So I have done a lot of work on this blanket. I would like to finish it this calendar year. I would love to theoretically be done by the end of October. Oh, and I just bumped one of my magazines on my setup. So there's all of that. Um, let me see. So that's all my current works in progress. And I have a couple things that are just about to be cast on that will have been started, I would say, long before I next talk to you guys, and I, they will be my new works in progress. So the first one is I've already picked out my yarn for my sixth pair of socks for the year. I purchased this yarn a little bit earlier this year. I'm mostly not purchasing yarn unless I have plans to cast something on pretty quickly, and I'm taking a little bit longer with my current socks than I thought I was going to, but I picked up this stash of stash the skein of mustache yarns in the oh, is it lavender apple blossoms yes the lavender apple blossoms colorway this yarn is gorgeous it is a dusty lavender with a muted rainbow with a light speckle stripe in it um she had a i can't remember if the other colorway was called apple blossoms or apple picking where it was gray instead of lavender but it was so gorgeous and I, I didn't get it the first time around and then when this one came out I was like I have to have this and this will be one of my treats to myself this year. Um, as far as socks have been going I have been purchasing a new sock yarn to knit up and then knitting two or three other pairs in between which is working out really well. I'm using up a lot of my old stash plus I'm getting to use some new stuff and within like a month or two of buying it which has been pretty awesome. And then the other thing I plan to cast on is, I didn't bring the pattern over with me, uh, but I was inspired by Amy Beth over at the Fat Squirrel Speaks to knit Canyon Lands by Nim Teasdale. Uh, Amy knit a gorgeous hand spun one of these. It's a huge triangular shawl that's knit on the bias and it has this interesting 
chevron kind of a detail in it and I decided to pull some hand spun because again it's tour de fleece and I want to knit with some hand spun so I pulled some old hand spun a combo spin from 2015's tour de fleece this is a spun right round combo spin I mean look at all those colors in there it's just purples and pinks and grays and berries just blues just delicious wonderful great colors but because my yardage is a little low and my yarn might be a little thick, I wanted to make sure that I have enough yarn because also on Amy's recommendation, I'm going to be knitting it a little tighter so that I don't end up with Find Your Fade Part 2. Um, I do not need another 12 foot wide shawl. That is just, that thing is beautiful, you guys, but that thing is ridiculous. It's only 2 o'clock? Yes, and I'm recording. Oh, sorry. It's okay. But it is, yes, it is only two, it's 240. That was my son. <laughs> uh, and then I pulled another skein that I hand spun in 2014 on a spindle. And this was a bag of uh, Into the World Odds and Ends that I picked up at Rhinebeck, the only time I've gotten to go. And uh, yeah, I think it's going to be gorgeous together. It's, let's show you the side without the little loopy on the bottom. Uh, because these are, um, they're both very cool in values, I think once I get to a thicker part of the shawl, I'm gonna stripe this one in so that it kind of can be seen from the front or the back, whichever way I wear it. I think it's gonna be kind of amazing. So I'm really happy about this. I think it's gonna be gorgeous and wonderful. And then I do have some yarn on order that's on its way here for a summer knit that I'm going to do. And then I picked up some more yarn um, from the same place. I'd made a, an order with webs that is gonna go with some other hand spun that I spun up two years ago year and a half ago that I've been wanting to make into the yoke of like a short sleeve sweater and so I finally found the correct yarn or the perfect yarn I think to go with that and it's from um classic elite yarns who unfortunately are going out of business and everyone who carries them right now is pretty much clearancing out their stock so I got the yarn for like 30 percent of its normal price maybe a little bit more I really couldn't say no to it because in order to finish up my sweater, it was going to be under $40, which for a lady my size, that is a phenomenal deal on a sweater quantity of yarn. So that will be coming and you'll be seeing that sometime early in the fall too. So let's talk about spinning, you guys, because it is the Tour de Fleece. So again, if you follow me on Instagram, you will be seeing a progress shot every day of what I've been working on, but I have been doing a ton of spinning. Now, so far this calendar year, I have not spun anything. I also haven't purchased any fiber, but I tend to get sucked into spinning when I do it, and I wanna do nothing but spin once I'm spinning. So it's a hobby that I bring out only if I know that I'm okay with not doing anything else for a while, which is why the Tour de Fleece is perfect for this. So I have been doing a couple different spins already. We are on, it's currently day six of the tour. Uh, I started off with some hand dyed comb top that I got at a local fiber festival. I can't remember if it was, I think it was the Little York Fiber Festival. It was one of the ones in a very small town around here. Um, and this came from Stone Edge Fibers, who I don't know if she's still in business or not. She didn't have a website. Um, she has an email address, but not a website. And it was a 60% Cormo wool and 40% alpaca described as very fine and soft, which by the way, having spun the singles is very true. Like I, I might be in love with Cormo now. So that is the first thing I spun up the singles for. And I decided to do a three ply. So on one bobbin, I did a single and you can kind of see how thin those spun up. But once it's three plied, it should be in the heavier sport to DK range. And then on the second bobbin, I spun up the second two thirds of the yarn. And what I'm gonna do is this one will get wound off into a plying cake or just a regular cake. And I'm going to do two of the plies from the cake and one of the plies from here. And they are gonna become hopefully a really gorgeous aquamarine uh, three ply yarn. And I have some other semi-solids that are from holiday yarns that I've been spinning up slowly and I would like to use in a bigger project like a blanket and I think this might go in there with it because in terms of how it's going to look I think it's going to be a perfect fit in that project. The second spin might not have actually been a fiber at all. Um, I have been discussing with a couple of my friends on Instagram whether this was actually intended to be a spinning fiber or not and because I am somebody who has never 
knit a lopy sweater and has never knit with anything even remotely like the yarn you would use in one of those. It did not occur to me that this fiber wheel might have been intended to be knit with. It's from Noro and it was called Rainbow Roll. I don't know if that's the product or if that was the colorway. I guess that's the product. And the colorway was 1015. This was lot B. Um, and it just says this product is not a yarn and is not twisted. Pilling can be happened by frictions. Short fibers may come out from the product easy to be felted and roll shape is breakable. Please handle with maximum care. And I just read this product is not a yarn and my brain went, oh, it's spinning fiber because it looks like it looked like pencil roving actually. It was very thin and it looked like it was meant to be drafted out. Um, you can't draft it, by the way. I'm just going to tell you that right now. There's so many short ends and so many neps, it's impossible to draft. And I think when this was given to me by my mother-in-law, she presented it to me as spinning fiber because that's what she also thought that it was and possibly how one of her local yarn shops sold it to her was this is a spinning fiber. And I think obviously you can spin the product, but it has since been suggested to me that it might have been intended to be used like that Icelandic wool that's mostly just roving and either has very low twist or no twist for doing those beautiful lobby sweaters. Um, so that might have been what this was intended to do. But I started spinning it and it took approximately 45 minutes to spin up all four ounces. And I turned it into super bulky singles, which my daughter has claimed and I'm going to ply these together and make a super chunky two ply. Now, one of these bobbins normally holds a minimum of five to seven ounces of singles. There's two ounces on each of these, so you can tell how bulky this is. And it made me very angry, and it never occurred to me that it might be intended to be used as yarn by itself. There's lots of colors in here, and you can't quite see them, but there's, there's some like ballerina kind of pastel candy pink in here. There's gold, there's blues. There's kind of a reddish orange color, the kind of things that you would expect from Noro and Kurion. Um, but yeah, so this might have been silliness on my part. Um, but like I said, my daughter really liked it and she's trying to learn how to knit. And I realized that if I make it into a super bulky yarn, she could probably knit either a doll blanket or a hat and need to work with only like 25 to 30 stitches, if even that. It's going to be, I think they're going to be some pretty fat, very tall stitches once this gets done. So this is spin number two, which took me all of 40 to 45 minutes one night. Now my third spin, I forgot to bring the card over, is a braid from Pigeon Roof Studios, who is sadly no longer dying. And it is a Polworth silk mohair blend. And it was one of her one of a kind colorways, which pretty much all of her colorways, I think were mostly one of a kind. She had repeatable colorways, but with the way how, I think her name is Krista, Krista dies, she had those super splotchy, super modeled um, braids that you couldn't really break up easily that have color. And this is the second half of the fiber, so you can kind of see what's in here. I mean, like that blue. But it's all these gorgeous pinks and browns and purples and blues, and there's lots of white in it. So it becomes very, very muted and very pastel. Now, so far I've spun up, and over the course of one night, spun up approximately one sixth to one eighth of this braid. And uh, I'm gonna hopefully start soon here on the second part. But here's what I have on my mini spinner. And just look at how beautiful and pastel that is. Like. That is, oh, it's my happy place right there. It's just, it's so beautiful. And like it's pairing so beautifully with the bobbin. I've been super happy. It's spinning about the same thickness as those blue ones. I'm hoping to, again, three ply this. And depending on how thick it ends up, I'm either going to try to knit it into some really pretty luxurious socks, or it might end up becoming part of that blanket project. Although this might be more less semi-solid tonal and more lightly variegated than all my other yarn. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet. This tends to happen when I spin. I don't tend to have a big plan for my spinning because my spinning kind of becomes what my spinning becomes. I try to aim for something and then see how it goes. I'm not a really technical spinner. I'm not somebody who's motivated to 
try to tame the fiber, I guess, and make it do whatever I want it to do. I'm just, I'm not that kind of a person. I am a little bit more laid back than that. So that is it for my current crafting content. If you are not interested in hearing where I've been and what I've been up to, uh, I will talk to you the next time I record sometime around the end of the tour, which will be the last couple of days of July. And if not, let's go into talking about what have I been up to in six months. So for this final part of the podcast, I thought I'd come in a little bit closer to the camera so that uh, you don't have to see me while I'm so far away. Yes, hello, are you back again? Are you just trying to figure out what I'm doing over here? She's like, what are you doing? I know, puppy, it's hard. Do you want to come say hi real quick? Oh, no. Oh, okay. Never mind. She ran away. She didn't want to come. What about you? Do you want to come up here? Do you want to come up? Up? Oh, hello. But you're not close enough for them to see you. Come here. Come here. Oh, we got a dog. Yes. It's a good girl. So, where have I been for six months? The answer is, I've been here. <laughs> but I have been cocooning for six months. Uh, originally when I took my hiatus, I thought I was going to be gone two, maybe three months tops, and I thought I would come back. But the state of things in the U.S. right now and everything else, and I think turning 36 is a little harder for me than any other age I've turned so far, because for the first time in my life, I'm closer to 40 than I am to 30 or any other age given at that point. I started to get really contemplative and wanting to change aspects of my life as well as I wanted to start to regain all of the health I had lost since I broke my toe in October of 2016 and everything kind of spiraled downhill and I started doing a lot of uh, bad stress habits well I shouldn't say bad I should say less healthy stress habits and I kind of just let myself fall into this swamp of despair or whatever it is that horrible place from the never-ending story that eats the horse you guys oh my goodness is that like not the number one most traumatic thing for very old millennials and very young gen xers you guys know what i'm talking about right the horse dies from sadness because it gets pulled into this sadness <laughs> i kind of got pulled into that place for a while again and i spent a lot of time wallowing in it and i'm finally at a point where i'm ready to be motivated and move out of it again. So I decided to focus on myself for six months. And I'm not as far along as I would like to be, but I am doing a lot better. I've been working on trying to get more sleep. Um, I started off by focusing on drinking more water and I finally got drinking more water down. I drink a minimum of like 90 ounces of water a day now. And some days it's closer to 105 or 120, but I'm really well hydrated, which you know actually does wonders. It's amazing how big of a difference being well hydrated is. Dogs, please don't lick my legs. Oh my goodness, stop it. They are fascinated with me in shorts because I normally have my legs covered at all times. So I started off doing that and I've been slowly working on trying to increase my step count again and trying to work on improving my diet just a little bit. Because for me, I don't feel good when I eat a lot of sugar and a lot of starchy foods, I tend to feel very bloated and thick through the middle and I tend to have a lot more mood swings and I tend to be very sluggish. So I've been working on trying to fix kind of one thing at a time and I've kind of got my step count. It's not up where I want it to be, but it's definitely better than it was say three months ago. I'm used to moving around more again to the point where it feels natural to move around a lot more. And I'm currently trying to work on cleaning up my, I even hate the word cleaning, fixing, it's not great either. Changing my diet just a little bit and what I choose to eat and how I choose to feed myself. And so I've been doing a lot of stuff with that and making observations about what I've been eating, what exactly I'm getting from it, how I'm feeling, and doing a lot of um, kind of self-reflective analytical stuff as I am wont to do. I'm somebody who likes to do this. So that's been eating up a lot of my time lately. Um, I've been, I'm somebody who, I've talked about this so many times in the past, I'm super introverted. I tend to, I, I really pull into myself a lot of the time and I've been starting to realize more and more that I actually retreat into myself a lot more than I realize, um, that that's where I spend a lot of time and I've, I've become a lot more aware of how much I do that. And I don't think that's a bad thing because I mean introverts are introverts. We 
don't do it on purpose to be malicious or anything. It's just I require a lot of quiet, cocooning time to just process everything going on around me. And I'm trying to be better about that. And I've been trying to do things that, as corny as it sounds, nurture me a little bit more. Things like I've been watching lots of things that are nostalgic for me and give me good feelings. I've been starting to read more. Um, I used to have an identity as a capital R reader and having children kind of killed that and I'm just starting to now get back into reading but I'm so slow and it takes me forever to read books now compared to what I used to. But I've been making it a point to try to read quite a bit more. So I've been slowly working through books. I've been, again, I'm, I'm trying to get to a place where I start painting and doing art again. Um, I've been trying to sew more. I'm trying to, I've been doing a lot of decluttering in my life in many areas, both physical and internal. Um, I've I've been getting rid of a lot of extra stuff in my life, partially because we're getting ready to move in about a year and uh, the military gives us so much weight we're allowed to move and I'm genuinely concerned we might come up against that weight limit and I don't want to have to pay any overage penalties for moving that stuff, especially when a lot of it is things that we're not actually using and just need to be culled and gone through. Um, just doing a lot of stuff like that. Lots and lots of work, even if it's not work that has any um, tangible results. I've been just doing this with my life right now. Um, I have really cleaned up my social media. I spend almost no time on social media anymore. I spend a lot less time on my computer. I try to, I don't know, I'm trying to be more present in the here and now rather than um, retreating into my head all of the time or doing other things. I'm trying to get back into the habit of taking really long walks because when I was doing that, it was a great way to clear my head and it allowed me to be kind of engaged with my environment rather than pulled inward and either on my couch or sitting on a device or doing whatever it is that I do with my free time all the time. So I've ended up getting a ton of knitting done as you guys will have seen in my FO parade earlier in the episode. And if you follow my blog, you would have watched my yardage and gone, man, Amanda, you have been doing a lot of knitting. And that's true. I've been doing a ton of knitting and it's felt really good because I haven't knit this much possibly since I've started tracking yardage or definitely not since a couple years into when I started tracking and I've been tracking my yardage since 2008 or 2009 so I mean it's been a long time so I've been doing a lot of that kind of stuff um so that's just where I am in my life right now I've been trying to think about how I've lived what is essentially the first half of my life because hi I'm middle age now um depending on how you define my generation which my generation itself is kind of weird i'm either depending on how you do it a very baby gen xer i'm a very old millennial or i'm this little in between thing which sometimes is called like generation um oregon trail or generation catalano or zen Zenials or there's all sorts of little monikers for those of us born between roughly like 1978 and 1984 who we don't quite fit into, we're not quite X and we're not quite millennials, but uh, depending on how you slice it and dice it depends on how we're classified. Um, but we're all middle-aged now, basically, except for maybe the 84 people have a couple more years left. But I'm gonna be 36 and depending on what how I'm classified, I'm either going to be expected to live not as long as my parents or expected to way outlive my parents. Because millennials are supposed to way outlive their parents and definitely the Gen Z kids behind us I think are gonna, <laughs> they're gonna live to be very old people. But my, where I am in the generations may not live to be quite so old. So giving that some thought, I'm like, oh, I, you know, if I were to be half my, you know, middle age right now, I might see, you know, 70, 72, 74, which I think is reasonable given my family's history and everything. But it's also reasonable to assume that I will, I'll be kicking in my 80s, but we'll see. Um, but anyway, I'm right in midlife now. So it's just been weird transitioning from thinking of myself as a young person, like as a young, young person, um, to being like, oh, you know, I'm not old by any means, but I'm definitely not young anymore. So just trying to figure out what, how I want to spend the next quarter of my life or so and what I want to be focusing on as I'm getting ready to head into my kind of, tw not twilight years yet, but my post-reproductive years. And I've got maybe 10-ish, 
10 to 15 more years of that left. So I'm not quite there yet, but I am starting to transition into that mindset because I'm definitely closer to that than I am to being like 20 again. So that's where I've been. I've been mostly in my head rethinking my entire life, which by its definition is what a midlife crisis. I've been having a midlife crisis, but unlike men, when they have midlife crises, uh, women tend to just go, Oh my gosh, I have wasted my entire life. What the heck am I doing with myself? Um, I somehow feel like the inappropriate cars and the younger girlfriend that is stereotyped as the male um, midlife crisis might be a little bit more fun than the female equivalent, which is to freak out and go, what have I done with my life and why did I waste all of it up until this point? <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm laughing about it because I realize I'm being kind of ridiculous and I haven't actually wasted my life, but you know how brains are. Um, anxiety and brain weasels are kind of jerks and man, do they like to kick you when you're down. So I've just been in this weird place of going, oh my gosh, I gave up so much in my life to live the life that I lived. Was it worth it? And just, <laughs> it hasn't been fun in my head lately. Uh, I'm doing fine. I, I really am doing okay. It's just uh, lots and lots of this kind of angsty, not quite existential, but definitely more philosophical um, questions I've been asking myself. So that's where I have been. I've been trying to make positive changes that will hopefully help my mental state and kind of help me be like, yeah, life is good. Things are fine. We're going to keep moving forward. And uh, yeah, trying to work on my, my, uh, my life view at the moment. So guys, if you stuck with me, I am sorry that this ended up being over an hour. I ended up talking a lot more than I thought I was going to. Thank you so much for joining me for the relaunch of my podcast. And I hope to see you all again shortly. Um, I will leave you with my old um, closing, which is until we talk again. Oh, I know what it is. I'm <laughs> okay. Until we talk again, be your very best selves and do good things. Bye, kittens. <laughs>